Hey everyone, I'm Zeta Sage Plays. Welcome back to Pomoja Wildlife Park. In today's episode, we're going to be working just behind the entrance that you can see here, building the first habitat that the guests will see when they enter the zoo, which is going to be a habitat for penguins. So this is one of my builds, and then behind it will be a backstage area created by Ina Meinung. So today, once again, I have with me the wonderful Diggy Duff. Hi again. And the... Oh, let me think of a word that isn't wonderful. Yeah. Easy, what do you want to be? <laughs> what adjective are you? I don't know. I'm just I'm under pressure. I don't know what I am. <laughs> You're the Prince of Primates, the King of the Climbers. I've run out of names. I'll take, I'll take whatever name I'm given. <laughs> And once again, we have the marvelous BZ. Marvelous works. Thank you. How are you doing, everybody? <laughs> Good to speak to you both again. So yeah, this week we are building a penguin enclosure. This is going to be the first habitat that you will see when you enter the zoo. It is directly after the entrance. Traditionally, uh, for reasons that I don't know, maybe you two do, um, you must have a flamingo exhibit immediately after the entrance. <laughs> um, I don't know why that's the case. That's not just in Planet Zoo. That appears to apply uh, for many, many zoos in real life as well. Anyone know why that is such a popular opening attraction? You know, I think birds in general are, this is just a guess, I'm no expert, but I would think that they handle the noise better than some uh, animals that tend to be more shy, maybe. Oh, that is a really good point, actually. Yeah, birds are pretty, they sort of combine having a really high metabolism with being very, very chilled. <laughs> They don't, there's not much bothers a lot of species of birds in my very limited uh, experience. But yeah, so hopefully penguins will fill that nicely and be a bit more interesting than yet another flamingo pool. Um, so the concept for this build is based on a exhibit at Disneyland California. Um, is that what it's called? Disneyland Cal California? Is it the original Disneyland? I don't know. Oh, Animal yeah. Kingdom? California is Disneyland. Right. Florida is Disney World. Okay, so Disneyland is the one I'm, I'm speaking about then. So, yeah, I mentioned uh, before that I never played Planet Coaster. I feel like it's kind of quite rare uh, within the world of Planet Zoo that I have absolutely no interest whatsoever in theme parks. <laughs> I've just never. Yeah, never I'm, I'm the same way. Oh, yeah. I never played cool. I Fellow. Play cool I actually haven't. Yeah, I don't play any other games besides playing a zoo. I don't. <laughs> I haven't played a game. I probably haven't played a game since Zoo Tycoon was out. Like, that, that's all I've played. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. that's sort of how I am in, in regards to, to theme parks. Um, so, I don't really know a lot about Disneyland. I have been to uh, Disneyland Paris when I was a kid. Uh, I didn't like it. <laughs> um, although I don't think it's uh, the crown in uh, in, uh, in Disney's sort of uh, empire, to be honest, from what I've heard. But anyway, um, I did think when we were talking about um, maybe having this being based on an old theme park, um, I should probably actually, you know, find out what a theme park was <laughs> and do some research. Um, so I looked into it for a bit and I watched a um, series on uh, Disney Plus about the history of Disneyland and all the different Disney parks. Uh, and one of the, the favorite things that I saw was, um, I think it was called Submarine Lagoon, um, which is, I think is like a 60s era ride in um, Disneyland. It's still there now, but they've re, um, Rethemed it as a Finding Nemo attraction, but basically it's these um, little sort of boats disguised as submarines that go around this lagoon, and they use various cool tricks to make it feel like you're actually underwater, even though um, only the bottom half of the boat is underwater. But you sit at the bottom of it, and they use like bubbles and stuff like that, so you feel like you're going underwater. Um, it looks like a pretty cool uh, ride. Um, if I'm ever in California again, I will uh, probably check it out. But um, I decided to base this um, exhibit on that and basically rebuilt it and replaced the submarines with uh, penguins. That was the idea. Either of you guys familiar with um, Submarine Lagoon? Not at yeah, all. I it's uh, based, the original design was based off of uh, the book 30,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Oh yeah. Oh, that, hence the, the Nemo Giant connection. Grid. Oh, now I know. That's yeah, now I know what you're talking about. I know now. And uh, I think it's right by the 
old Autobahn uh, car track at the old California Disneyland. Right. Kind of it, near Tomorrowland. And yeah. I the I'd, way from the uh, Okay, I actually thought it was in Tomorrowland. Uh, but yeah, I could well be wrong. This is basically, you know, Wikipedia and one TV series is my entire knowledge of Disneyland. So not an expert. But one of the things I really liked um, about the Submarine Lagoon, which, which is why I decided to base the um, habitat on it, is that it had a monorail running through it and I just thought it'd be a really cool idea to have uh, the remains of a monorail running through the penguin habitat serving absolutely no purpose whatsoever. <laughs> I don't know why um, that attracted me so much but I just for some reason I just thought it, I think it was just the look these these um, what I'm building here the uh, the uh, supports I guess you'd call them for the um, the monorail are exactly uh, or pretty much exactly what is actually in Disneyland for their monorail and I really like the look of them um, probably because they're quite modernist in design which is what I like so I decided I just wanted to basically rip those off and put those in the habitat but not actually have a, any monorail to go on them like they were the rem remnants of the original theme park and I'm pretty happy with how they how they look in there I don't know what do you guys think about completely pointless monorails <laughs> I think it really uh, influenced how the rest of the park ended up turning out because we were able to incorporate that in a lot of different areas and kind of have bits and pieces of supports popping up that help sell that abandoned theme park look we aimed for. Excellent. Glad it um, served a purpose. I did actually take a little uh, leaf out of your book, Diggy, here actually, and I tried to, I think I only did one of them in the end. Look, I completely forgot to do the rest of them, but it's really the only one you can see. I spent ages trying to make one of these supports look old and decayed. Um, I'm not sure what techniques you use to do that. Um, I had, oh, what did I do? I think I used like, you know, the mud panels that you can recolor. I think I yeah. sunk. Uh, the, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I think I sunk those into the uh, into the plaster to try and look like, you know, paint peeling off and water damage and things um, that's definitely something I need to work on more I'm not as good as uh, as you guys in doing that but it, I can see why you can um, how you can enjoy doing that if you see what I mean it is a lot of fun trying to make something perfect and then uh, ruin it use uh, what piece is good for that the arbor wood I think it came out oh yeah not from the Africa pack, pack. I think, yeah I think, yeah in the Africa pack it's, it's a it's real weathered look if you, it, I think it's yeah, and it's recolorable too. So if you mm. make it gray, it looks like old metal. Oh, yeah. nice! I'm a big fan of that piece. I use it a lot, but I always use it as wood, not as anything else. So <laughs> I'll definitely have to look into that. Now, what those mounds thing is that the enrichment? Yeah. So the other thing, this is again taken directly from um, Submarine Lagoon. The it's sort of like a. I don't know, I guess they were going for maybe a coral reef feel or, or, or something, or uh, just that sort of old 60s sci-fi fantasy, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea thing of um, having uh, these projections coming up from the um, from the water. The, one of the reference pictures I used actually was when it had been drained. So they, um, at some point, I don't know when, uh, probably 20 years ago, maybe something like that, they drained the whole thing, stopped, you know, sort of sh shut it, drained it, and then spent a few years adding loads of um, Finding Nemo uh, stuff to it so they could rebrand the, the ride. And I had a photo of it when it had been drained and you could see all the, the artwork that they'd created to make it look like you were 20,000 leagues under the sea when you were in fact in about you know maybe two three feet of water um and this is what i use i just use the termite mounds to do that they look a bit, um, they look a bit janky right now but um once they've got uh the aquatic rocks and loads of other stuff around them to um sort of sit them into where they are um i'm pretty happy with how they look uh in the end they definitely have that uh, kind of san andreas trench kind of um deep underwater volcanic yeah formation what you'd call that yeah maybe that's what they were going for i've not I, I don't really know exactly how the ride progresses i i know it takes you from sort of a lagoon and then at some point you're supposed to go under the arctic 
uh, and you know you're supposed to go through loads of different environments so maybe that's what it was for a sort of uh, underwater volcanic vent kind of um, kind of deal but yeah they the, the termite mounds seemed to work really well once I'd finished um, sort of hiding them and then I just used some of the rocks like this as well to so it wasn't all exactly the same things there's only one of those natural termite enrichments so you can only rotate it so many times before it starts to look exactly the same got the big underwater uh, viewing window in on the right hand side as well um, that's it, you know what it probably took me longer to make that than the other the rest of it combined because I had to use paths and I hate <laughs> I hate paths <laughs> trying to like dig out the terrain with paths it took forever Paths are not your friend in this game. Yeah, they're nobody's friend, are they? Uh, speaking of paths, I'm at the point now where I actually don't even put paths <laughs> in my zoo. I don't <laughs> even use yeah, I know. I it's... Use yes. So yeah, behind each enclosure, I literally just have the, um, what's the name of the thing? The Animal Trade Center connected directly to the habitat gate and one person, one keeper back there. And that's all I need. I use no paths whatsoever because they're pointless. That is absolute bliss. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what you do, just ban guests from my zoo, <laughs> and just have, just have like yeah, they, uh, they bring no, po- they bring the guests bring no positivity to the zoo. They just bring all drama. They can stay at home. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Although unfortunately, yeah, my other zoo's a franchise zoo, so I need the, uh, I need the guests sadly. <laughs> yeah, they just bring trash and break stuff and complain, complain. and that's about it. They yeah, complain. All they do is complain. I guess. I didn't you could just track in beforehand but i'm assuming that's the old monorail track right um so that is what the submarines would have gone around on Our submarine, excuse me yeah. yeah i did actually it's not in the speed bill because it was too embarrassing to to make public but i did actually try and make <laughs> one of the um sort of a rip off of one of the disneyland submarines i wanted like one of the submarines just sat in the back like a, hey this is why this is here this is what the um this is what this habitat used to be sort of deal. And I figured I'm not the best at making um, making stuff out of small objects, but um, you know, stick one at the back and it'll be all good. But it uh, turns out um, I'm not even good enough to make one to put at the back, so, <laughs> so it's not in there. But um, they had these really distinctive sort of bright yellow um, submarines, basically. <laughs> Maybe that's where the Beatles got the idea from. But um, they, they were right, uh, um, they went around on a track all the way around the habitat uh, and then the track got a little bit deeper so that um, when the guests were sat at the bottom of the boat the guests were underwater even though most of the boat wasn't if you see what I mean and that's what sort of gave the immersion of being underwater in the ride so I wanted to put the tracks in so that that just as a sort of a reminder of that yeah it turned out great I love it when you build something in your zoo and then later on you're somewhere uh, and without realizing it you then make somewhere else look better because you can now see whatever new stuff you built in the background i love I agree. that That's, yeah i agree that's why people are always quitting halfway through building a zoo and i'm like you guys got to stick to it because that's when you get the best screenshots you get the best pictures the best views it's, it, it takes a while to get to that point yeah once you get all that stuff in the background it, it just makes a bunch better you get all the depth you need the depth if you want things to to look good and there's no apart from just whacking in a load of workshop offices in the background or something there isn't really a shortcut to that you've just got to build it all haven't you mm-hmm. this is a um a waterfall obviously this is probably another thing that people spend a decent percentage of their time in planet zoo doing trying to cover up the giant waterfall piece so it doesn't look like a giant waterfall piece well no it would have been great if they gave that to us as uh, one of the effect pieces and didn't have that big yeah kind of block around it <clears throat> it's very limiting i mean i got away with it here because yeah, yeah. it this is a really man-made um you know 1960s theme park style thing so you can just put a giant pool of uh oh, sorry a giant pile of um unrealistic looking rocks in and then that's cool because that's what these things look like but when you're trying to do it you know in a na- more naturalistic environment it is a bit of a nightmare oh that's what i did yeah yeah um what is th- i don't even know what that is is that one of the temple blocks i think that's what i tried to use yeah, to simulate the um the peeling paint uh, and then you i could think- you could have just made the whole support out of the temple blocks that would have worked that's yeah, they a good texture. It's a good idea. Well, that's <laughs> one of the, uh, the faux aquatic rocks, actually, isn't it? Possibly. I think 
was oh it is yeah aquatic rock for oh, like it is, yeah, it is one it says one. actually yeah yeah but um yeah i wanted it to i didn't want it to look too decayed because um obviously this is supposed to be sort of the entrance uh first thing that the guests see but i figured we could get away with one um one or two bits looking a bit worse for wear and then i'm just trying to simulate the fact that it's literally broken off and fallen down at the ends with these pieces um because i wasn't sure if we would want to have a monorail all around the park or if it was just going to literally be here and i kind of like what we've ended up with i think you've done most of that diggy which is just putting um bits of the broken monorail into bits of the park where you fancy having it and then not having it in bits where you don't fancy having it um, and because it serves no purpose in terms of actually transporting people you can um you know you can just put it wherever you like yeah and it, it ties it helps definitely helps tie the whole map together because this it, it definitely helps mm. to see some see something that's exactly the same throughout the course of the map because there's a lot of you know different buildings different styles in here so to see something you know this monorail that's exactly the same throughout the zoo just helps to tie it all together yeah i completely agree that's one thing we never that, that's one of the reasons we um sort of came up with the whole theme park thing is that there was a lot of different um styles going on in terms of building um and uh the there wasn't like a sort of a there was never a grand plan for the for the zoo where we had um you know exact this is going to go here this is going to go here uh, everything's going to look like this blah, blah 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 it's more of a sort of these are the things we want you know do what you like go crazy with it have some fun with it and then we'll we'll sort that out later and uh hopefully we've uh, we've achieved sorting it out later <laughs> With a theme park, you can get away with anything, practically. Precisely. It's wherever your imagination takes you and whatever you want to do. And I like that as well. I like the fact that everyone's been able to build in their own, pretty much in their own styles, but with an eye on the, the overall concept. But no one's felt like they've got to do something this way. My stuff's still, you know, 90% white concrete. Diggy's got his retro stuff going on. Beasley's got his climbing stuff going on. Ida Mine was just going crazy. Um, I should mention as well, she made these penguins. Um, they're so cute. Uh, she just They just appeared um, in the penguin pool while I was building it one day, uh, which I enjoyed. So I kept those and just recolored them. So they were the, uh, the color of the African penguins. And that is the, uh, that is the build done. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, stick around for the cinematics at the end and we will see you next week for the final episode of Pomoja Wildlife Park see you later guys see you guys goodbye everyone <laughs> <laughs>